Welcome to week five, filters and delays. Today I am going to model a Toft ABT console EQ with a EQ3 plugin in Pro Tools. We're going to select the parameters and we'll save it. The EQ I'm going to work with today is from a Toft ABT console. This is a four band EQ. The high EQ is a selectable shelved EQ and you can select either 12K or 8K and it's plus or minus 15 dB. The next band on the EQ is a parametric band. It has a bell shaped curve, also selectable in or out. There's a button to engage that. The bandwidth is from 1.5K to 15K and plus or minus 15 dB. The next band, the third band, is also a parametric bell curve. Selectable from 100 Hz to 1.5K plus or minus 15 dB. The fourth band is selectable at 120 Hz or 80 Hz. It is also plus or minus 15 dB. This EQ is also equipped with an 80 Hz high pass filter. After you engage it, it rolls off everything below 80 Hz. And finally, there's an EQ bypass button. When engaged, it's lit up and you know the EQ is now functioning. For today's demonstration, I'll be using Pro Tools 10. And in the insert, I'll go to EQ and I will be using EQ3, which is a seven band EQ. Here it is. Now EQ3, is a seven band EQ that comes with the Pro Tools suite. It has five bands that can be selectable with either shelving or the outer bands can the high and the low band can be uh, either shelving or it can also be a bell. The three inner bands are all bells. And then also there's two filters, a high pass filter and a low pass filter. So as I had stated previously, the high band has a selector of a high shelf or a bell curve, as well as the lowest band, a low shelf or a bell curve. And you have your high pass filter and your low pass filter. The first band that we're going to start with is from the ABT console is the high shelf band which is selectable at 12k or 8k. So let's take a look at the high band on the EQ3. Right now it's set into a bell curve. We're going to go ahead and move that over and select high shelved. Then we're going to go to the frequency. It's at 6000 right now. And we're going to pick 12,000, which was one of the selections on the ABT console EQ. We're going to engage it by hitting N. The top console had minus 15 plus 15 dB. The EQ3 has plus or minus 12 dB. Now let's look at the mid band or high mid band of the top console. It's sweepable from 1K to 15K, plus or minus 15 dB. There's also an engage switch, basically a bypass. This band of EQ is a bell curve. Now let's look at the high mid frequency band on the EQ3. There's no selector for bell curve or high shelf it's automatically a bell curve. If we go to the frequency selector, we'll put in 1500 kilohertz, which is the lowest part of the sweepable range on the Toft EQ, which was sweepable from 1500 kilohertz 
to 15,000 kilohertz. We'll select N to engage and now we can go up 18 dB or cut 18 dB. Now with that we also have a Q so right now it's kind of in a tight band and we can go with a big wide band just sweeping it back and forth finding that notch that you need either to add subtly a little bit of EQ or if you want to surgically remove a frequency you can put a real tight band on there and sweep it until you find that annoying frequency and pull it. The next band on the top console is the low mid band sweepable from 100 Hertz to 1.5 K plus or minus 15 dB. It's a bell curve with no selector for a high or low shelf. Alrighty, back to the EQ3 plugin and Pro Tools. Let's go to our low mid frequency band and go ahead and activate it. We've activated the band. There is no low shelf selector on here, so it's automatically designated as a bell curve. Let's go to our frequency and let's set it for the lowest parameter from the top console. The top console was sweepable from 100 up to 1.5K. On our gain control, we have plus or minus 18 dB. So if I add some gain, I can take my Q function again, just like on the other band, and I can either tighten the band or widen the band. Now back to the top console EQ. Let's do the low band now. On the low band, you have a selectable switch for 120 hertz or 60 hertz. This is also a bell curve, plus or minus 15 dB. So now back to the EQ3 plugin. Now let's look at the low band, the low frequency band. It's set at a bell. On this particular EQ, we have the option to set it as a shelf or a bell. We're going to use the bell option to match the top console EQ. We'll go ahead and engage it. We'll set our frequency for the lowest parameter from the top console, which is 60 hertz. This, the top console had two options, 60 hertz or 120 hertz. Here's our gain. adding 18 dB decibels per octave or lowering 18 dB decibels per octave. And finally, we're going to look at the top console EQ and we are going to engage the 80 Hertz high pass filter. Now the 80 Hertz high pass filter filters all the low frequencies out below 80 Hertz and lets all other frequencies pass through. And finally, let's go to the last band, which is our high pass filter. We're going to go to the frequency on the high pass filter and we're going to set it for 80 Hertz, which that will match what the selection was on the top console EQ. We'll engage it and we're at minus 18 dB per octave, which is a nice setting. And that will roll off all of the room noise or any kind of rumbling below 80 Hertz. So now with all of our filters selected to the proper parameters, we're gonna go ahead and save this selection as top Q, which I've already saved it but let's go ahead and save it again. I'll overwrite it. And now I have that selection available to me if I'm working on a project and I want to get the uh, parameters of a TOF DQ. I can just pull up that setting and I can start from there. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. I'm Brian Cuban. Have a great week.